What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and an interesting new leaked memo from inside Netflix disparages Dave Chappelle and the saga between him and the uh, the sniveling weakling, I would say, uh, Pat Oswalt, gets a little more spicy as Joe Rogan weighs in on everything. This and more in today's topic. Hey, I don't have a sponsor. It's January. January is rough. Uh, what I am doing today is uh, asking if you are a part of the 40% of my viewership that is not subscribed to please take a moment if you have to create an account or whatever. I understand. I, I know it's a pain, but to please click that red subscribe button down below. YouTube is <laughs> burying my videos in search results, so it's the only way. And maybe if we push hard enough, YouTube will uh, will break through this uh, current shadow ban. So, uh, yeah, so there's that. And if you're watching on Rumble or Odyssey or BitChute, please subscribe there as well, too. Netflix leaked memo on Dave Chappelle instructs recruiters on how to discuss the controversy. Now, there was no controversy. He talked about some basic biological facts in a non-exclusionary way, and the internet lost its mind. There was even a protest outside of Netflix, which uh, fellow YouTuber Vito Gisaldi, Giz Gisaldi, I'm sorry, Vito, uh, attended with uh, Mr. Masterson, and one of these lunatics that work for Netflix uh, went after them, ripped their signs off, uh, Mr. Masterson got pushed. They both filed police reports, from my understand, which I'm proud of them for. Um, so usually when you see any kind of like sketchy behavior, it comes from their side. Um, this was a Netflix employee that was involved in it, by the way. Netflix sent recruiters talking points on how to avoid discussing the closer with job candidates, according to a leaked memo obtained by The Verge. The memo tells members of the talent acquisition team to not comment on Dave Chappelle's stand-up set, which sparked a national conversation about garbage. Find a way to respectfully end and move on from the topic if you press further on the topic in the areas not covered in the talkie points. The memo reads, In the selection titled The Closer and Employees, Netflix encourages recruiters to state, we value our trans colleagues and allies and understand the deep hurt that's been caused. We respect the decision of any employee who chose to walk out and recognize we have much more work to do, both within Netflix and our content. By the way, they paid Chappelle, I don't know, $100 million or $200 million to do this stand-up special. And they and I think it was the most watched thing on Netflix. It's definitely the most watched stand-up comedian on Netflix by a wide margin. Um, Netflix is fine cashing these checks. You don't get to have it both ways. Either Netflix cares so deeply and they cancel these, you know, they stop paying for these kind of jokes or cut them or whatever, or uh, they embrace them. I mean, ideally, I'd prefer my content creation, you know, platforms to not have a political opinion and just bring me the best quality entertainment. But we know that Netflix doesn't do that. The memo also hints at concerns Netflix might have had regarding an ability to hire in the wake of the controversy. While the issue did not translate into a business problem, no kidding, uh, for the company in terms of known account cancellations, it appears some executives worried it could dissuade talent from wanting to join the company. So let me be clear here. Nobody canceled Netflix over the Dave Chappelle special. Nobody. And this is proof of that. Historically, Netflix has prided itself on being able to hire and retain top talent by paying above market rates. I mean, how many potential employees, honestly, who need a job are going to show up for a job interview, get offered a job for, I don't know, 100, 200K, it is in California, and say, I don't like this one show on your platform, so I'm going to I'm not going to accept this huge salary and great opportunity. Uh exactly 3 people in the entire world maybe, okay? So, it would never have affected their hire. Um now, after the company released the closer and doubled down on its support of Chappelle, at least two trans employees resigned. Uh except for one of them was fired. Another employee, uh B Pagel's minor was fired. The company said that they had leaked con confidential information, a charge the employee denied. Well, here's the thing. 
if there was no validity to the claim, that employee would be suing Netflix for millions of dollars and winning. So I think it's safe to assume that they probably did do it. In the memo, Netflix told recruiters to respond to questions about the termination by saying, we have let go of an employee for sharing confidential, commercially sensitive information outside the company. We understand why they may have been motivated by disappointment and hurt with Netflix, but maintaining a culture of trust and transparency is core. Now, if we look at these talking points, they're hilarious. And also, like, I don't know, maybe it's a California thing. Maybe it's a straight entitlement thing. But, you know, if I'm interviewing for a job, and maybe this is crazy, you let me know in the comment section. I don't think I'm bringing up any potential controversies. Imagine um, uh, wanting to get a job at Blizzard. I know that they have had their past and whatever, but it's just a, a decent example. And in your interview, you're like, hey, could you tell me about all these terrible controversies you've been involved in? Like, you're probably not getting the job, you know, whether it's for some other unknown reason. Like these, these people in California, they live by like a different, they live by a different set of rules, I guess, than, than they, we do in the Midwest. But you see, pointers, discuss three points in reason, response to the candidate in, inquiries. Use your best judgment here. This isn't intended to be a script. Talking points, the closer and employees. I can't comment on the closer. We value our trans colleagues and allies and understand the deep hurt that's been call, caused. Um, employee termination. Oh, I already read that one. If needed, this employee was only person, if needed, this employee was the only person who accessed the specific information and admitted to sharing confidential information externally. So according to Netflix, B. Pagel's minor, I believe it was, they admitted to them that they shared it. On the walkout, of course, we value if needed. CEO Ted Sarandos addressed the situation on October 19th in a series of interviews. As a company, we are committed to inclusion. We are working hard to ensure more people see their lives reflected on the screen and underrepresented communities are not defined by a single story. Um, sure. But, you know, what it is is you know, it's 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 not exactly a bold move. It's really more of a move of cowardice from the network because, I mean, they're, they're so worried that people are going to ask these questions that they had to script. They had to provide scripts for their recruiters on how to dodge the questions. Uh, and now also uh, things get extra spicy as Rogan weighs in on the Pat Oswalt situation. If you don't remember, the uh, Pat Oswalt... Uh, who is like a Z-level comedian, but seems to be well-liked by his peers, um, went out of his way to apologize for being for taking a photograph with Dave Chappelle and also released what can only be described as a cringe-inducing selfie or that he had some assistant take of him penning his apology for being photographed with his, in his own words, a friend of 35 years. Pat Oswalt claimed that Dave Chappelle had been his friend for 35 years. I believe that. It's probably true. Um, but then went on to apologize for being photographed with him. I don't know about you, but I'm making no apologies for somebody I've been friends with for 35 years. I'm making no apologies for anyone I've been friends with for five years. So it's just a complete like act of cowardice. Of course, Patton Oswalt wants to keep working and he thinks, you know, if he can if he can do this. Uh, you know, bend the knee to the woke mob, then he'll keep working. Uh, Joe Rogan ended up weighing in on the Patton Oswalt apology, saying Dave Chappelle does not have any problem whatsoever with trans rights and representation. It's not right. Well, I love see. Patton too. Well, what happened? He's like Patton's a very kind, very sensitive guy. Weak. You know, there's there's being sensitive, but then there's being weak. But that's really what. She, what Patton is. And Patton apparently was in town with Dave to Dave's show. Dave was doing an arena. Apparently a bunch of people were saying, you know, how could you hang out with that transphobe that this and that Bob Long people. Oh, there he is. Yeah. And you know, the real fuck up what he said is he disagrees, one hundred percent disagree about transgender rights and representation with Dave. That's not true. I think he said that to placate the mob. But Dave does not have any problem whatsoever with transgender rights and representation. It's not right. So obviously Rogan here sides with Dave. He actually knows the guy, so I'll probably default to him. 
but this is the the culturally that this is where we are like you can't make observations about like biology or other things of that manner because suddenly you're phobic even if you're just making the observation that hey <laughs> biological women are the ones who have babies that's just kind of the way biology works suddenly people will call you phobic which is absurd all that does is shut down conversation it doesn't actually help anybody but uh yeah dave chappelle's laughing all the way to the bank and so is joe rogan so i don't think either one of them really care i hope you enjoyed this video we'll talk to you again real soon